Chapter 1, The Madness Years As the sun rose over China in the year 1967, a nation held its breath. Tensions simmered between the hardened revolutionaries of the past and the passionate young idealists just coming of age. The Cultural Revolution was in full swing, and nobody was safe. Picture this. A man stands defiantly, steadfast in his beliefs. This man is Yi Jedi, a physics genius professor, refusing to be swayed by the deafening crescendo of the revolution around him. He was a man of science, not of political whims and wills. The blackboard was his battleground, the chalk his weapon of choice. The students at Tsinghua University are on a professor torturing rampage, accusing them of being bourgeois reactionary academics. Many of the profs have offed themselves or given up their beliefs, crushed under the weight of mass humiliation. Yet, our guy, Yu Jedi, a physics genius, is a rock in this turbulent sea. He's hauled into a struggle session, essentially a brutal public trial slash torture session. They want him to change his mind, to bend to their will, but he refuses to do so. As he stands before the student body, the physics professor is physically tortured. His wife, once a loyal partner, has turned against him, berating him for teaching Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, which she believes is against communism. The situation quickly spirals out of control as the students begin to beat the professor with a copper belt. The torture takes a dark turn when Yi Jedi mentions he believes in the possibility of a god, a big no-no for the fanatically communist students. Like a pack of rabid wolves, the young girls in the room attack the professor, and within minutes, he is dead. The students flee the auditorium, but one person remains, the professor's daughter, Yi Wenji. She watches in horror as her father is killed before her eyes. Chapter 2, Silent Spring Fast forward two years. The professor's daughter, Yi Wenji, is stuck chopping trees in the wilderness of Inner Mongolia, part of the government's production and construction core. As the trees topple, it's like watching history being erased. Yi Wenji can't shake off the memory of her father's tragic death amidst this tree megedon. By a reporter for the Corps, shares an American book he read, Silent Spring, which he reveals has inspired him to protest the government's reckless deforestation. He even lets her borrow the book, but warns her to be stealthy about it. Reading the book, Yu Wenji finds her view of humanity darkening. She concludes that humans are inherently evil, needing an outside force to jolt them awake to their moral shortcomings. After returning the book, he visits Bai at his home near Radar Peak, a place straight out of an X-Files episode. With a massive, weather-altering, illness-inducing antenna at the peak, and the mountain itself being a heavily guarded military base, it's all kinds of suspicious. Bai wants to send a letter protesting the environmental destruction to Beijing's top brass. He's nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs, so Yi Wenji offers to copy the letter for him. Fast forward three weeks, and Yi is summoned by Director Zhang. Accused of writing Bai's controversial letter, she finds herself caught in a dangerous misunderstanding. Realizing she's been framed by Bai, she's left with no defense. Imprisoned, and interrogated, she faces a choice. Sign the document, accept the false accusations against her father, and perhaps escape punishment. But Yi, much like her father, holds firm. She chooses truth over expedience. In response, they resort to cold, brutal punishment, pouring freezing water over Yi, tormenting her into submission. Her world spins, the borders of reality and fantasy blurring. She hallucinates, sees her dead sister and faceless others, waving flags in some twisted parade of her subconscious. As she blacks out, we're left with a sense of foreboding. The journey is just beginning, and we can only hope that Yi Wenji, like the silent spring, finds her voice and her strength amidst the trials to come. Chapter 3, Red Coast 1 Yi Wenji awakens, not in the familiar comfort of her bed, but in a throbbing helicopter hovering in the cloudy realms above China. 
waking up sick, disoriented, and enveloped by the thundering of the helicopter blades. She's greeted by two Pla men. He, caught in the throes of her disorientation, overhears fragments of a conversation between them. They speak in hushed tones of her tumultuous past and the need for someone as isolated as her at the enigmatic Red Coast base. A shiver runs down her spine. What did they have in store for her? With the steady whir of the helicopter blades, as her only company, he arrives at the behemoth that is Radar Peak. There, it hits her. She is sequestered, cut off from the world she once knew, plunged into a realm where mystery lurks in every shadow. Whatever she is about to begin at Radar Peak, it's not temporary. It's permanent, like the unyielding granite of the mountain they stand upon. She's on the cusp of a journey with no return. As he surveys the scene, her eyes are drawn to the giant antenna reaching out like a metallic titan. It hums with life, its transmissions creating a whirlwind of strange effects, birds dropping dead from the sky, a grim rain in this silent spring. Yet, in the face of all these mysterious happenings, he is left in the dark, unable to comprehend the purpose, the target of this colossal antenna. The whispers of the wind carry unspoken secrets as our chapter closes. What is the true nature of Radar Peak? What lies ahead for you, Wenji? Chapter 4 The Frontiers of Science Fast forward to over 40 years later, and Professor Wang Mayo who specializes in nanotechnology, gets an unexpected visit from a Shikyang, a cop. He's curious about his contact with a cryptic group called the Frontiers of Science, a global brain trust of elite thinkers. He pushes Wang for information. It's all rather puzzling, especially when he invites Professor Wang to a secretive meeting in the Battle Command Center. That afternoon, Wang walks into the Battle Command Center, and it's Chaos Central. Sleep-deprived generals, including surprise, surprise, some from NATO, police, and renowned academics are everywhere. The man in charge, General Chang, police officer, she is interested in Wang's work in nanomaterials, stuff so tough it could slice a car in half. He hands Wang a list of physicists, asking if he recognizes any of the names. Then, he starts questioning Wang about the potential to use nanomaterials for crime. Not the line of questioning Wang was hoping for. Then comes the bombshell. Each physicist on the list has committed suicide in the past two months, including Yan Dong, just two days ago. Her boyfriend, Dingy, hands Wang her suicide note. It's a cry of despair, claiming physics has never existed and will never exist. Ding explains the frontiers of science was wrestling with the limits of knowable physics, which started breaking down as it got more complex. Choosing not to return home, Wang heads to Dingy's place, Yang Dong's boyfriend, as though this day hasn't been eventful enough. Well, it's safe to say, buckle up folks, because we're in for a wild ride with the three-body problem. Tune in for the next chapter, and until then, keep asking questions, because science never sleeps. Chapter 5, A Game of Pool. Strap in folks, because we're diving right back into the wild world of the three-body problem. Now imagine this, Wang finds himself in Ding's apartment, an almost desolate space that echoes with unspoken hopes and dreams. It's clear that Ding had pictured a rosy future with Yan Dong in this minimalist haven, plans for a family, laughter, love. But alas, Yan remained distant, a puzzle piece that refused to fit. And then, oh, what do we have here? A pool table, perfect for breaking the ice and also the perfect metaphor for collisions in a particle accelerator. Can you see the look on Wang's face as he realizes this? Priceless, I tell you, as Ding's pool cue strikes, balls colliding and scattering, he delves into some hardcore science. He talks about the new revelations from particle accelerators that have blown the lid off the sacred, invariant principles of physics. In layman's terms, folks, the rulebook of the universe just got tossed out the window. 
There are no one-size-fits-all laws of physics. Mind-blowing, right. Wang, being the quick thinker he is, quickly connects the dots. A heart-wrenching despair. His scene in the scientific community suddenly makes sense. This could be why scientists, like Yan Dong, surrendered not just their work, but also their lives. It's like waking up one day and finding out the ground beneath you isn't solid. Scary stuff, guys. As their game winds down, and before Wang steps out, Ding slips him an address. It's Yan Dong's mother's. A visit, he suggests, might offer some clarity. Or maybe more questions. Who knows in this roller coaster of a tale. So stay tuned for the next chapter, folks. Until then, remember, science is like a game of pool. A perfect blend of skill, luck, and unpredictability. If you've traveled with me this far into the video, I'd be thrilled if you'd consider giving me a pat on the back with the like button. But if this journey didn't quite do it for you, don't fret. Maybe our next adventure will. Subscribing is your passport to join me as we explore more exciting chapters in the vast landscape of books. Help shape the future by leaving a comment with book recommendations for chapter summaries or feedback to enhance the channel.